I want to greet everybody as distinguished fellow colleagues, friends. Well, I want to greet you all as one family. Yes? yes? yes. And we're going to talk as family. And I want to begin, first of all, I want to begin, I, I have a charge for everybody, all the way from policymakers down to my very little friends. And I want to begin by us understanding this massive, crazy theme that you guys came up with. Do it with thy might. Do you know what that means? Full hundred. Everything. Lay all out there. Leave nothing. I saw a boy run prep school champs and he tore the last meter and landed on his chest like a helicopter. You know, as we contemplate why it is that a sapper poet can't manage the rounds, you ask young people and they tell you, he never got chance, sir. If they got chance, he would have known, yes, how to deal with the challenge, sir. He never got chance. He started from the cousin, brother, dead, sir. Oh young people have said that to me. And, sir, if we get in fast, but not expecting to run to no heat, yeah? quarter final, semi final, final, no, sir, no problem. He never got chance. And you wonder, and people come from all the world trying to understand why is the young people who go to chance, yes, can do what they do. By the way, we found a boy at age 11 who is running sub 12, first in the history of the world. Huh? A Jamaican from St. Andrew's Prep, 11 years old, running, running sub 12. It means the Americans and the Europeans, this story just gets painful. <laughs> because if they thought we were going to have a gap between this generation and the next, the next generation is already here. Yes, exactly. Are you with me? Yes. They are already here. And so it, it bothers me. And I say to you that all of us must begin to take responsibility all of us must begin to say, my children will become the next set of policy makers in this country because some of them are smoking alcohol and drinking, listen to me, cigarettes. <laughs> it's as bad as that. They must be smoking alcohol and drinking, yes, I won't even say herbs since that is a short for my name. <laughs> Something is wrong. When I say to policymakers, do it with thy might, sometimes it doesn't bounce on them. We live in a very crazy country, a very crazy world, in fact. I am trained as the only anthropologist of social violence. I understand that more than I understand anything else in my life. Came back home in 2008, and everybody around the world, a buzz of excitement. Woo! The Caribbean now has a violence expert. Who consult me for violence? Europeans, Americans, Central Americans? The Caribbean is just beginning to say, it's true you can help. <laughs> and the Jamaican government has not yet got it in their heads that we can actually solve this problem. So policymakers are doing it with anything else that rhymes with might, but certainly not might. Because you never ever can say to somebody that I've done my best until you have drawn all the resources that are around you. Yes. Many of you wonder why these small schools do so well. Now I can't tell you what the principal has told me because I don't want to burst above bubble. Let him tell you when it comes to that time. But when you look at, I, I was guest speaker at the independent schools. All independent schools came together in Ultra Rise 
and I was one of the guest speakers. And there's nothing that really struck me so, so really brilliantly more than the fact that independent schools can do it and get better results than government schools. Why? Because you have learned to do it with all your might. That's where the battle is. That is where the battle is. There's no sense in having five and, and spending one. You have five, but you spend one. How do you do that? And that is precisely where the problem is. People come into government. Within three months, they put on weight faster. Within three months, they have done all the medicals that they need to do in Miami. Within three months, they start to build a new house. And you sit here with a frame of mind that says, when my party comes in power, me I go help them people. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Jamaica suffers from what is called a segmentary factional frame. And let me explain that to you. We found it in St. Kitts, we found it in Trinidad, we found it all over the Caribbean. Caribbean people sit down, they watch their governments see, rob, and they say, we will win because when we party come, we have a nyam food talk. And there's no accountability. Nobody is doing it with all their might. And the hypocrisy People going around in the name of Jesus, saying all sorts of nonsense, trying to fool our people to pretend that they are doing something. It upsets me. As a person who works in the international sphere, it upsets me that my country behaves in this manner. And you can't join them. I sit and I watch pastors jumping upon the road talking about homosexuality. Open a cook shop around the back of, the, of your church and give some people some food and it will solve the problem. Many of us have forgotten the book of Isaiah. Every other book is good, but the book that says true religion is helping your brother. We've forgotten that. I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist church. I will never ever support homosexuality. But that is not the point. The point is, the time we take to focus on these people, we could have been saving the lives of our young people. We are suffering from something in this country called socially induced homosexuality. Do you know what that means? It means we are making them gay. Let me explain to you. If I have a brother and I do not take care of my brother, huh? he needs $10 to go to school and I have $10 and I walk past and don't give it to him, some man will whisper in his ear. We are socially inducing homosexuality. There's a term for it, it's called needs based homosexuality. In the year 2000, Barisha and myself, God bless him, we found for the first time inner city boys who are considered to be the most macho on earth, saying they would have preferred to be born girls because their sisters with two and three CXCs, God leave them with five and ten CXCs because they're boys. So now, And now we're jumping up and wondering, why is it people talking about Jamaica homophobic? I work in the inner cities. I've seen inner city homosexual males putting on back for heterosexual males and combing their hair. That's where we are. Because the people we put in power are not doing it with their minds. And we are not holding them accountable to do so. 
We do not even have a TOR for who represents us in this country. How can you have a country in which you had three and four party governments? You have how many? If you name DF, I just find two more DF to confuse the voters. One man, they, they search him all over Grand Spain, all over Kingston, and when they find him, he said, no interview me. But you have name like the man and confuse the poor voters. Why? Because anybody can become a member of parliament. Lose. And none of us take stock of what we're doing. So now, now the homosexuality thing come up. And we are trying to walk upon it. And we are walking upon it on the road. But we are demonstrating. Ever hear something like that yet? Ridiculous. Give me a country where the people will demonstrate because our children have been harmed. Yes. If you can demonstrate for our children, ten years from now, you won't have to demonstrate because they have become something else because you made an input. I have a board meeting, a six o'clock board meeting on Molines Road in Kingston. I can't speed on your roads because they're snaky. But when I finish, I'm going to go. But I want to make sure everybody gets this and gets very, very clear. We have 20,000 young people and children first. We found children first in 1997. 20,000 young people. We cannot get this country to get behind us and help those 20,000 young people. But everybody wants big house. Twenty thousand. We started off with fifty boys, Pastor. Fifty boys. You have fifty yards, right? The fifties make sense to you. Yes. Twenty odd thousand young people, children first no see. And we're trying to get the government, the private sector, everybody. This board meeting I'm going to is about that. If I get there six thirty quarter to seven, I will be there. We're trying to get into the cranium of people in this country. The time has come to focus on your children. Palestinians! Here is where the crux of the problem is. Parents, I'm going to talk to you for five minutes, not even a second more than five minutes. Put up your hands if you're a parent. God bless you. Listen to me for five minutes. Any day, any day, any day at all that I go anywhere in the world and I find a parent that looks better than the child, I say fire. I hope you heard me. Yes. Yes. I was a senior teacher at a little school in St. Andrew, and uh, the parents turned up in pine up on their side and they beat me barefoot. Fire, fire, fire.
If you haven't joined your credit union, don't let Monday morning pass. Tell them say Herbert Samuel Gill said you. Open an account for your children. Are you with me? Me never said to you. That's right. Me said to you, pick me then. Whatever a girl becomes in life is her father's fault. Where are the fathers? Where are they? Put up your hands. Whatever becomes of your daughters is your fault. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, sir. You want homosexual, you want lesbianism to turn up in our country? Make the fathers miss you. Explain to you this. If a father is around, a little girl learns to trust people and she learns to be confident. In raising a girl, girls have only one, one weakness when you're raising girls. Boys have 15. Yes, they're hard to raise. Boys are much harder to raise. Any parents inside with a boy and a girl? Yes. How old is the boy? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell everybody a secret. The boy requires 1.6 times more breast milk. Sometimes when they suck, you feel a pain in the back of your head. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The little girl goes. The boy's up. <laughs> they are different. They are what? They are different. Jamaica has become so stupid about gender that I'm hearing women say they want the same amount of food. Is the same amount of food now? And see if we have a rolling up the hill. I require one and a half times more food. Feed the boy pity them. As I watch parents meander through this morass of what we call gender in Jamaica, I have had to say to people sometimes very bluntly, stop the nonsense. Pastor, you know how far we are gone in this world? A Canadian couple had a, had a child and said they, they will not declare the child's, the child's gender or the child's sex. They will allow life to take care of it. He was weighing like 15 pounds more than I was, even though he's two and a half years younger than I am. I was very small. And she called and she said, Herbie, listen to me very carefully. I have a question for you. You are the only one in the family going to prep school. You are the family project. You have those, right? Don't you, you still have those? Yeah. When you find one thing, I say, ah, are you, are you, go on. She said to me, if I, give, if I have one dumpling and you need this one dumpling to live, and your other bro brothers also need the one dumpling to live, what would you do? I said, I would cut the dumpling into pieces and make sure everybody gets a, gets a little tat before we all die. And she said to me, that is the most stupid thing I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> she said, boy, listen to me. You, and I grew up with a mother who never spoke Creole. I remember that specific day she said it in Creole. You, nyam the whole dog play. <laughs> then, get energy to go out on the road to look more dog play for your brothers. <laughs> the philosophy of my mom. If you don't have pastor, you can't give. So teachers, community, everybody, go learn to have. Read, go back to school if that's necessary, do whatever it is to make sure you are doing it with all your might. Are you with me? And let me leave three philosophies with my graduates before I go. Number one, if you have a cavity, do not ever, ever be disrespectful to a dentist.
you will die from vanity. What does that mean? It means, that, it means life is 50% what you make it and 50% what other people make for you. You have to do it with all your might to ensure you maximize your 50. Are you with me? Yes. But you also have to negotiate the other 50 respectfully to other persons. Yes? yes. Your teacher is late for school repeatedly. Miss, can you please come on time because I really need it. Yes? You have to find a way, young people, to get what's out there for you because the world owes you a living, but you have to pull the trigger. Yeah? And your parents have to teach you how to do that. So I've given you two philosophies. Life is 50% what you make it, and 50% what other people make for you. And you have to negotiate out of 50. And maximize your 50. And I say to you, yes, love yourself so much so much that if you love your neighbors even half as much your neighbor is safe don't ever go into this world and be afraid to love yourself it's not selfishness that is how the species go on yes when you get up in the mornings every morning give God thanks Lord I'm alive and every day remember every day is a graduation every day is a what? this is only a ceremony Graduation means to get better. It means to what, people? Get better. And every day you must get better. Every day you must be better at math, better at whatever it is. Every day you must graduate. Yes? As you grow, you must not only grow up, you must grow better. Yes? Huh? I'll tell you one quick story. The school I went to, the first school I went to, you never had to pass math. They had a weird philosophy. It has changed long ago. But when I was there, you, you could get anything else. And my principal had a, had a principal. Had a principal. If you were on honors roll, lunch was free. And I was poor. What a combination, Pastor. Free lunch. And I'm poor. Yes. More food. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I loved it. You have to set some kind of weird goals for yourself. Every A I get, I buy myself something. Yes? Yes? Agree? Yes. And you're going to see how easy it is to mash down the subjects. Yes? When I went to the University of London, I said to my friends, the only way I can come with you to go anywhere at all is after I get the highest score in the entire unit in the University of London. There's a West Indian little black boy up in here among these white people and I'm here to destroy it. That was my philosophy landing in London. And as soon as I talked to everybody, I would go have fun. No fun at all until I'm number one. I reward myself. Yeah. If you can do that, nobody in this entire place, yes, can miss the program. Because you have it locked. Take care of yourselves. Work with them. Make sure everybody here is responsible for them. God bless you. Take care. Clap him. Clap that. I did a wonderful job, guys.